This video focuses on running payroll in QuickBooks Online. It is an overview. There are two types of payroll now with QuickBooks Online. I'm in my client's QBO file from QuickBooks Online account, and as you can see in the upper left there, there's either the full service payroll or there's kind of the do-it-yourself QuickBooks Online payroll. And when you click on the Employees tab in the left navigation menu, you have an option to kind of learn more or start the payroll and then choose whether you want the experts to do it, which would be the full service payroll, which can be a little more money, but Intuit actually handles the liabilities and the forms for you. Or the more affordable way to go, the do-it-yourself, where the client's going to not only enter the time, hours, cut the paychecks, do the direct deposit, but also do the liability and the forms. And typically there is a $2 a month per employee charge that includes a direct deposit and the e-pay and the e-filing. And then payroll itself is a fee on top of the QuickBooks Online subscription. So I'm actually on the, you know, the, basically the employee dashboard. There is a little chart and graph up here and I can run payroll or look at the paycheck list. It, it reminds me when payrolls do as well. And I'll show you settings. You can get email alerts for all that, not only for ePay or filing of forms, but also for running payroll. And you can do bonus checks, things like that. But let's drill into Scott here just to see what uh, an employee would look like and the different options you have there. So in the employee details, I'm going to click the pencil next to pay. So you have pay profile, which would be their, you know, information, if you will, W4 info, and then employment ID, things like that. And I'm going to click on the pay. Here's Scott's withholdings or allowances. Again, you can add a lot of stuff to this. So I'm sorry, this is his W4 information, and we'll just change it. He's single here, not married yet. Um, and then, you know, the Alabama state taxes. You can do local taxes as well, depending on where the employee lives and then any tax exemptions uh, that he would have. And those are not going to be very common ones, but I can show you what's available. He's not really, rarely are they exempt from FUTA, but there's Social Security Medicare, and then Alabama State, and then the ESA. How often do you pay him? There are payroll schedules. You know, maybe it's twice a month, maybe it's every Friday. You can add a new one. Uh, he's an hourly employee. Here's his rate, but you can add additional pay types. Two, you can add hourly rates as well uh, if you want and just name it. And then I can also pay Scott for overtime, double overtime, sick, vacation, holiday, the typical compensation items. And then some uncommon ways to pay an employee, allowance, clergy, housing, cash tips, paycheck tips, bereavement, stock bonus. You can even add a reimbursement type if you want. And you can add other earnings types as well. You just name them. Okay, so you have some flexibility here as far as compensation items and things like that. And then what about deductions, right? I have the section 125 and then the 401k, but I can add another deduction just so you can see what they look like. And I can choose that it's a deduction, contribution, or a garnishment. And then here are the deductions that I have for that. For the garnishments, these are what would be available. I'm assuming those are fairly typical for those of you that do a lot with payroll. Here's where I can delete the payroll. Uh, let's go to his profile, home address, right? In this city and town, this, this matters for local taxes as well, phone information, gender, notes, and then the employment tab. We'll go there right now. If he has an uh, employee ID, the status, you can even make him inactive if you want, or maybe he's on paid leave, hired date, work location. For I can filter the payroll details report, which is really QuickBooks Online's version of the payroll summary by work location. And then if you have workers' comp, and that's an additional fee. So we're going to click done on the employee. And that's pretty much setting up an employee. And there'll be a wizard you go through to set them up, each one. Let's look at the pay checklist for Scott. And there's his checks. Let's go ahead and drill in on net pay. And this is what the paycheck will look like. I'll show you one when I run payroll. Employee taxes. Deductions. Employer taxes. Company contributions. A memo at the bottom. And here's where you can print it or delete it if you want. That's important because you can't really edit paychecks uh, as you can in the desktop payroll once they are created. So I will show you that as well. Now, before we run the payroll, I just want to show some key settings. Uh, if I go to the gear icon, settings, payroll settings. If you're used to Intuit Online Payroll intro on, or Intuit Online Payroll for accountants, you've seen this window before. So here's where I can set pay schedules, vacation sick, pay time off, deductions, contributions, set up direct deposit here, um, and then state taxes local tax jurisdictions, uh, any electronic services like e-file or e-pay, 
accounting preferences could be important. What accounts you want to reliability accounts, et cetera. Let's we'll drill into there because that's important. So I can choose which accounts I'm going to want. And you just click the little customize tab at the bottom. Um, and these were kind of by default, but I can go ahead and change them if I want to. The other thing I want to mention, as far as alerts, a lot of times by default, the accountant will get alerts and you might not want them. So just click on email preferences. And then, you know, you need to have at least a client, sometimes both, but I only do both for the tax payment reminders or the form filing reminders. And I have the client for all the payday reminders because really they're handling this. Okay. And, and if they're struggling, then just have them get the full service payroll. Finally, let's run payroll. I'm going to click run payroll up here, even though it's due tomorrow. Might as well run it today. Get some direct deposit going on. And I'm just going to go ahead and do it for the salary item uh, employee because I can track that as well. Just so you can see what a check looks like. Right? You can edit it here if you want or just kind of review it. But I'm going to click preview payroll. For on this next screen, here, before you submit the payroll, you know, because you can't edit or void, you can delete paychecks in order to go edit them. But you can't edit them once you submit them. So there's a drop down arrow and save for later. So if you're not sure that you're done or there's, you're still waiting on some hours or waiting on this or that for the payroll for uh, click save for later. But I'm going to click the net pay and it'll look a lot like that window we were in when I was editing the paycheck uh, before. You know, here's my information. I can put in some vacation or sick hours and things like that. And then if I want to make some adjustments to taxes, I can do it on the federal and the state, but all the other ones you can't. So, and then of course I have employee deductions and employer taxes uh, there as well. I'm going to click OK. Looks all good to me. And I'm going to go ahead and submit the payroll. Put in the check number. Here's where I could view the payroll reports. I'll do that later. If there's direct deposit, there'd be an option here. I'm going to click finish payroll. And if there are tax payments due, I can click review and pay, which I'll do, or you can do it later. And that'll bring me to the pay taxes where I can go ahead and record a payment. Um, and then, you know, under taxes, payroll tax, that's basically this window. The taxes payroll tax window is also where you'll file your forms. And if I want to look at my quarterly forms, for example, I can. And then let's say the 941. It's going to want me to record payment first. That's pretty easy. And then you click preview just to show you the form. And then we'll look at some reports. And here's a 941. And finally, reports, manage payroll. And again, there's some key payroll reports, payroll tax liability, payroll details report, very important. You have total payroll cost. The payroll summary is just a list of paychecks. If that's what you're used to is using a report for payroll with desktop, enhanced payroll, click the payroll details report. I'll just do this year and then summary by employee. And I'm going to run the report. And now I have my quote unquote payroll summary report. The difference is that the employees are rows and the items are columns, flip flop from the desktop payroll summary report. But if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you have the total and then the grand total. And that is managing payroll in QuickBooks Online.